and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with EOA TV. The UK could delay its divorce from the European Union after the British Parliament once again threw out Prime Minister Theresa May's plans for a managed Brexit on March 29th. 391 MPs voted against and only 242 voted in favor. To provide an analysis on this situation, we're joined in the studio today by Yulia Osmolovska. She is the executive director at the Institute of Negotiations. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello. So why? What was the um, stumbling block that prevented uh, the English Parliament, the Parliament of the United Kingdom, from adopting the plan of the divorce? Well, uh, it was quite expected, uh, uh, the results of uh, yesterday's vote, because uh, Theresa May uh, didn't succeed in delivering any substantial changes to what has been agreed before with the EU. And uh, actually, the um, reference uh, to the Attorney General and his assessment of legal implications mm -hmm. and legal aspects of the changes introduced uh, uh, gave little ground for actually hope that the uh, situation might be changed in favor of uh, accepting this uh, uh, Theresa's May plan. So therefore, it's just happened. And uh, they're following actually <laughs> the negative scenario that they plan to go. Okay, what happens next? Next, uh, today they are going to vote for uh, exiting uh, EU without any agreement as such. I mm -hmm. would be surprised if uh, this vote was, would pass through the parliament mm -hmm. and uh, they would decide because uh, economic and political implications of uh, uh, the absence actually of the divorce treaty, if you, if you wish, uh, uh, are very huge mm -hmm. and uh, everybody understands this. Uh, and tomorrow, if today uh, this vote uh, won't succeed in the parliament, they would vote for extension of the negotiation period or mm. the period of fi actually final farewell mm -hmm. to the EU uh, from 29th of March to the date is not decided yet. And this is another intrigue because uh, some experts say that uh, it would be enough to have another two, three months or it would be necessary because uh, they have to complete this process before next elections to the European Parliament. But the other experts say that uh, uh, what's the use of having this two or three months period if uh, Theresa May hasn't succeeded of having these two three months for renegotiations and they couldn't deliver anything uh, different? So, so is it possible yes. that uh, the extinction period could be even more extended? It should be more yeah, if they want to have actually uh, a substantive result uh, in the end, which would uh, uh, please and satisfy uh, both extreme camps within the uh, British political uh, circles. Mm -hmm. And uh, the EU would be content with this as well. So uh, they would need uh, much more time. But uh, even if uh, a British Parliament votes for this. It's up to Theresa May uh, to go and to talk to EU leaders, asking them to prolong this period. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is another question which, which is still not answered. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned economic consequences. Right now, UK is already suffering the economic, um, economic consequences of the turmoil around the Brexit deal because the European banks are uh, largely withdrawing the money from the UK banks. How, um, <clears throat> how much is um, English economy suffering right now and um, what's, what could the outcome be if the deal, uh, if the um, English Parliament does not make a deal with Theresa May in, let's say, the upcoming year? Uh, it's very difficult to, to calculate precise figures uh, for the uh, actual economic losses that uh, <coughs> the UK suffers uh, today. Uh, some experts estimate this up to uh, one trillion of uh, uh, pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but in any case, this uncertainty uh, and uh, indefinite uh, uh, scenario where Britain should go. So. Um, 
definitely deprives it from the benefits of uh, business uh, which, uh, uh, which would like to leave the e UK for other countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. And this process couldn't be stopped even if uh, the Britain adopts another decision in the end uh, to stay in the EU, but the process already begun. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies already would be moving their offices to the other countries in the EU and they won't be likely uh, to coming back afterwards. Mm -hmm. So in any cases, in the long run, in the medium term run, uh, Britain uh, would definitely um, experience negative impact of this uncertainty period which is uh, uh, coming, which is happening right now. Mm -hmm. Before the voting took place, um, UK's Prime Minister Theresa May had a conversation with the President of European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, and um, they have agreed which part of the UK and Ireland a member of the EU should be staying. And in addition, London and Brussels agreed to work together on the legal aspects of the issue of UK leaving the EU and conclude a new agreement by December 2020. But after this meeting, Jean-Claude Juncker, Juncker said, and I quote here, they, there won't be no third chance. What did he mean by that? Yeah, it means that the EU actually experiencing uh, a fatigue with mm. Brexit already. And uh, uh, the point is that uh, they don't have any clear uh, option in mind how to resolve the problem of uh, uh, putting the uh, new border uh, between the Northern Ireland and the island as the EU member, <coughs> because this would give a spur to terrorism activity uh, that uh, they finally successfully secured uh, uh, some decades ago. So this is the main point. And uh, because they don't have this vision, they can't uh, actually negotiate it. And this was one of the reasons why, why the second plan of Theresa May also failed, mm -hmm. because she didn't produce any sort of uh, clear decision uh, where to go, what to do with the um, Irish border in this case. And uh, another issue is that this uh, agreement uh, in its stance as it is exists right now has already been passed through European Parliament. Mm -hmm. So it would be very difficult to start negotiation process from the very beginning. So doing some substantial amendments and then asking for ratification by uh, European uh, parliaments then should be uh, approved uh, it should be approved by the EU leaders and heads of states uh, and then each national parliament should ratify it. So it's mm -hmm. a very lengthy uh, process and uh, therefore every Every European uh, functioner, if he thinks about what uh, uh, the long way they need to go, uh, they just uh, again experiencing this fatigue with Brexit and uh, getting to nowhere. So therefore, they're so pessimistic. The fact that uh, United Kingdom is still unable to leave the European Union doesn't make the European Union itself stronger or weaker on the international arena. <laughs> <clears throat> I think uh, at least it. Uh, uh, provides with a strong argument to the EU authorities, uh, to those Eurosceptics in different uh, EU member mm -hmm. states uh, who would uh, uh, speculate on option of leaving uh, the EU at some point in the future. Because with the Brexit case, it became obvious that uh, exiting is much uh, harder and expensive than being a member of the club. So at least this advantage that the EU leaders could use from uh, from from the situation. In terms of uh, international uh, image of EU, I don't think that uh, they would uh, uh, lost much of it uh, because of the Brexit. Because for everybody it's quite clear that it won't be an easy process and uh, mm -hmm. there is no stri uh, any straightforward uh, solution to that. But on the other hand, uh, it plays in hands of uh, countries uh, which are interested in shaking the consolidation uh, and the integrity of the EU member states uh, mm -hmm. and playing on bilateral basis with different countries of the EU. Uh, who would them uh, uh, give the rise to national sentiments mm -hmm. and uh, uh, not going into integration but rather to disintegration and defending their national interests on their own. I'm not just hinting on Russia here. The United States could also be a beneficiary in this. Uh, speaking of integration, um, what, what position could Ukraine end up in once the Brexit deal is actually up and running? Well, Ukraine should uh, apply uh, uh, 
uh, should be ready to any any uh, kind of developments and uh, f f could be preparing different scenarios of dealing with uh, UK either as a member of EU or as not a member of EU. Uh, as far as I know, there are already calculations about possible uh, models of free trade agreement with uh, the UK, which mm -hmm. is being done by the Ukrainian authorities. Mm -hmm. So this is very uh, far-sighting uh, move. But actually, unless uh, or until UK uh, leaves the EU, there is no any possibility of having formal talks on any new trade agreement with any country. So this is the uh, trap where uh, United Kingdom finds itself with this Brexit uh, headache. Well, um, let's keep a close eye on what happens next with the UK and its Brexit deal. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much as well. That was Yulia Smolovska. She is executive director at the Institute of Negotiations. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for more.